So here we go. Uh, make sure your calculator is on polar mode so that uh, you're ready for this. Wait, what? What's polar mode? Polar. Polar mode, go into function, or go into your mode, you gotta change the function, right? Ah, go into what? Mode. Go into mode. Mode here. Change the function to polar. Where's function? Oh. What about radians and degrees? Radians? I can't say that. This is a quiz, you're supposed to know this already. Exactly how to do it. Yay! <laughs> Find polar coordinates for each point. What does polar even mean? It doesn't matter. Just think of it as instead of x and y, you have r, which is a distance, and theta, which is an angle. To find r, plug the x and y coordinates into this equation. Then, to find theta, Plug the x and y into this equation, and then use the inverse tan function on your calculator. Be careful about the whole radian and degrees thing on your calculator. In this case, you need to change. You need to use your calculator in degrees because you're changing from rectangular to po polar coordinate form. But if they ask you to change from polar to rectangular, use these equations. So your z1 and your z2 are written in rectangular form right now. So first, you have to find out what the polar coordinates are before you write them in polar form. You know how to do that already, just use the two equations to solve for r and theta. Okay, so 3a. Simplify 1, negative i root 3, 1, negative i root 3, 1, negative i root 3. That's distributed property, right? Yeah! Okay, so but b. Expressing rectangular form using De Moivre's theorem? De Moivre! He's our best friend! He made this really cool theorem. Do you want to see a picture of him? Um, no thanks. It's okay, I'll show you anyways. Don't worry, his theorem do isn't as hard as his name. Now that you have R and theta, plug them into this equation for Z. Daichi, don't let this mysterious cis equation freak you out. It's just a shorthand version of this equation. But it's so much easier just to think with this one. Now for the Argand diagrams. Basically, Daichi, in the land of Argand, <laughs> there's actually solid ground. This can, you know, you can think about it as the x-axis. And this is the real axis. But everything above the ground is imaginary. And this is imaginary. And these little Martians plant plants there. So if you had a point, well, let's look at the point we've been looking at. Negative 1 plus i root 3. Okay, the negative one, the negative one would just be along the solid ground like normal, negative one. And then you'd float up to root three. And that would be your point. The I in front just tells you that it's on the imaginary axis, so you don't have to worry about that when you're graphing. She's pretty much talking about a normal graph, except an imaginary axis replaces the y-axis. So we already know that z equals r cis theta, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, in this problem, it looks like just one of these portions is the z. Now, Dimagwa really likes math, you have to understand. 
He was daydreaming one day and came up with this equation. And he was really happy, so he celebrated. But Daichi, just between you and me, it's really simple. So, it, so we established that one of these is the Z, right? Meaning this equation has three Zs. So all you have to do is plug in three for N. Just first find the polar form of one Z using the Pythagorean theorem and the tangent function to find theta. And then it's a piece of cake. Thanks guys, I think I get it now. Good! But now you have to go take your quiz. No! Yeah! Oh! oh my god! I can do this now! <laughs>